What is our life without the presence of God? What is our life if we don't walk in the ways of God and live under the shadow of his wings and the protection of his ears so we can walk in a way that God wants us to be? What is life? We have no life without God. One person believes it. See, we cry out, what's church? What's singing? What's praising? What is anything in the pursuit of life without God? We can have a great, wonderful, friendly, loving church, packed to the rafters, good preaching, good teaching, good worship, but without the presence, we've got nothing. Absolutely nothing. And do you know what brings the presence of God? Corporate, corporate worship. You know, your heart's being hungry and open and wanting the things of God. One person walks in here can transform the whole place. It's what, what we're about. Without God, there's a, a pre, without his presence, there's a symptom of a- emptiness in our lives and our souls continually cry, God, where are you? I don't know, I've been in that place. I just feel, God, look, I, I, just, I just can't feel you. I don't know where you are. You're not speaking to me. What's happening here? You search your life. Yes, my life's right. Everything's good. What, what's happening? Why is that happening? Look up and be happy and cheerful because God is playing hide and seek with you and God's taking you into a deeper relationship with him. Seek him out in those times. Don't stop seeking him out. But when we get involved with displeasing things of God, I believe the Lord's not really happy because the spirit of God quenches within us. You ever had that? Sometimes you do something or say something that's not right and you go, mm, oh, that wasn't right. Or you're just not happy because, oh, see, I'm feeling down and a bit depressed lately or my joy's gone. Sometimes it's because of our lifestyle of what we're doing and we haven't been reading the word, we haven't been praying, we haven't been seeking his face, we haven't really just loving him and, you know, we've just let the fire go. So God says, hey, I'm here for you, but press in. Get back to where you were. If you take a child to a babysitter, or you leave at night to go somewhere. I remember when the kids were young. Oh, don't go, Mom, Dad, please stay. Because they love you. They don't want to leave. I remember my first day at school. Man, I'll still forget it. 50 years old. Still remember when I went five years old at school. And here's Mum. I don't know, in those days, it might be different. They didn't come in with you, but she left, stopped at the gate. Off you go. Grade one, a little backpack. <laughs> I was scared, man, and she wouldn't come past the gate. And I said, please, I was crying my eyes out my first day. Walk, I could still remember the path, walking down the path, the gate, everything, crying my eyes out because mum wouldn't come with me. I don't know if you've had that experience, but you know what I'm saying? Because we don't want to be without their presence. We don't want to be without their guidance and their help. I'm wondering how we are with God, you know, when we feel the God. So why do we weep and cry, God, I need your presence. I need you so intimately. Oh, please come with me. Guide me. I, don't, I want you around me at all times. See, that's the love that God wants with us. Because he's a good dad. And the good thing about it, no gate stops him, eh? He'll go wherever you go, wherever you want him to be, he'll be. No one's big enough to take on God and say, stay outside. That's the good thing about God. Psalm 32, 1 to 4, David shares with us what life's like when he's tired when he's tried to hide his sins from God, he says, Blessed is those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin in the Lord does not count against him. Isn't it a good place to be? Thank God that he forgives you, that he's actually even forgiven you for tomorrow. But you can't walk in it and just say, Oh, no, I'm forgiven, so I don't really have to worry about it. No, God wants a relationship with you, and he wants to grow you as you go. That's why 1 Corinthians... Uh, 1, 1 John 1 9 says, confess our sins and he's, uh, you know, just that he'll forgive us for all our sins and cleanse us from our righteousness. We need to be people like that that are continually bringing them to the Lord and growing in him. But the wonderful character of God is that he does understand the tragedy of sin that happens in our life. In Psalm 32, 5 to 7, David explains about that, but he says, when I acknowledge my sin to you, and did not co- you did not cover up my iniquity. Remember, even David with Bathsheba, even though he confessed his sin, the child still died. But the child was in the better place because at the end he said, I can go to him, he can't come to me. 
but there still had to be a ramification for our disobedience and things like that. Sometimes God doesn't punish it at all. But I just think sometimes it's just a little notch in there that we need to clear out in our life and really, you know, commit our spirits back to the Lord continuously. So according to David, he didn't only forgive his sins, but he changed his whole destiny as well. And that's what we're looking for. And why do we hide things? He says there in his place, David becomes the hiding place. He says, I will become your hiding place, David, it says there. So he, God is hiding David. Why do we hide things? We hide things because we protect them. We want to protect them. We love them. We want to make sure that they're safe. Is that right? And that's what God wants to do for you. He wants you to be hidden in him. That's why he says there, he says, when he hides us under the shelter of his wings. Remember the wings that we've learned through uh, Shane Willard and also you know, through readings and that of, of culture that the wings is the talit, the, the, the prayer shawl and the ends of them are called the wings, the borders, the hems. And the wings talks about the presence of God. Remember? So when he, he covers us in the shadow of his presence, that's where protection is. And so we need to be people that continually hunger and chase after him and, 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 and find him and, and live under the presence of his, of, of his almighty presence and comfort and strength. You know what I'm trying to say? And the Holy Spirit's big enough to talk to you if there's things that maybe that you're not living right. Things in your life that you need to get rid of. Maybe things in your life that you've put before God. He's big enough to talk to you. It's not for me to judge you or talk into you. You need to listen. God's speaking to you. The Holy Spirit speaks right now. And what you need to do is just fix it and notch it a bit and run back to him. And he will take you on to great things. We can either hide from him or hide in him. It's up to you. Just as a close, I want to tell you a story that I remember with our girls when we were young. We used to always play hide and seek and you'd, you'd get there and you'd go, okay, run. And they run through the house and you go, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 30 and you get to 100 and you say, I'm coming. Most times they hide in the same place. Kimberly hide in the cupboard a lot. Amanda was under the bed. All sorts of things like that. I remember when I used to play hide and seek when I was younger, I used to be under the bed and I used to see the fathers walk, you know, backwards and forwards and I just go hope you don't see me you know sort of thing but they used to hide in these places so I'd be going down the hall I wonder if they're down the hall you know and nothing there and I wonder if they're in the kitchen I know they're, you know you run around opposite places so they're going and next minute you hear this you know and you go what was that noise oh that might have come from the lounge room and they go again and, you, and then you walk straight past their room you know and they're oh I must be in my bedroom you know and you roll back in their room and say oh I don't know where that is maybe it's under the bed because you know they're in the cupboard under the bed oh where is it do you know what they've changed from hiding they want to be found they want to be found and why do they want to be found because they want to hug they want to enjoy it they want to enjoy you of being found do they not come on I remember that all the time we used to have fun and it's the same as God. God said, oh, he just wants to be found. You know, sometimes he walks past and, you know, just pretends he doesn't see you, right? And you've got to cry out, woo, I'm over here. And he'll go, oh, where's that? And you'll go, God. And he'll just turn and come for you. The object of the girls' game totally changed. It was about being found. And that's what God's all about. He wants to be found. He, he plays hide and seek. Most times we hide and he seeks. But we need to seek and hide in his presence. It's the same with the Father. Because the Father is the same as Christ. Loving, forgiving, empowering. But what saddens God most of all is when we hide. Please don't hide. Run to him. When we allow our actions 
to remove us from his presence cuts his heart out, like any father, yeah? But it's not always sin. It can be the distractions of life that we're hidden away from. And I'm wondering this morning, is there any area in your life that you've been hiding in, away from God? Or is there a hiding place that you go that maybe you shouldn't be going? God needs to work with you with that. Maybe you've been hiding from him in your business. You've been running from him instead of to him. You've been seeking him out as he withdraws and hides, but you haven't seeked him out long enough. God says, keep chasing me. I'm just here. I may be down the hall. You're hearing my voice. You've only got to the kitchen. Keep listening and chase me. He's waiting to accept you with his arms open wide to be your hiding place and protect you and give you hope in your beginning. And I believe it's time that we are God chasers, as Tommy Tenney, I think it was, said. Be a God chaser, because God loves being chased. It's time to run. Push everything aside. Place sin aside. It cost him everything. What about you? It'll cost you everything to find the absolute wonderful presence of God. Isn't that good?